The flagship, obviously, uh, as you may know by now, is none other than Adam's calendar. Uh, well, that name, just so that you know where the name comes from, when I first met Johann Heiner in uh, 2000, uh, early 2007, Johann Heiner was the guy that rediscovered the site. And there he is, uh, also with his incredible discovery, realizing that it's a working and functioning calendar with a shadow of this, of this rock here. The setting sun casts a shadow on that rock there, and the shadow moves from this side across to that side. On this side is the summer solstice, and then you can tell every day of the year by the setting, the shadow of the setting sun, until you get to the winter solstice on this side, and it starts to move back. So it's still an accurate working calendar, and as far as I know, it's the oldest working calendar, sun calendar of, it, of this nature in the world. And, uh, but that was just the built-in feature for the calendar. That's not by far, or far removed from the main reason why this site is actually there. So when I first found it and I was writing a book about it, I had to come up with a title for it. And you know, we were all speculating that it was very close to the origins of humankind. So who was the first person alive? It was Adam, obviously. We all know it was Adam. <laughs> so that's why it's called Adam's Calendar. And somehow the name stuck. <laughs> so that's what it is. And uh, Baba Kreda Mutwa told me, uh, I just released the book. You can see it lying on the table there. And when I showed him this book, he literally, he literally burst into tears, started crying. He said he never thought he would see that special place again. And then he told me a lot of information about the place. The fact that he was initiated there in 1937. That it's known as Inzalo Yelanga, or birthplace of the sun, where humanity was created by the gods to be slaves in the gold mines. It's really that simple. You know, there's no mixing of the words here. It's very, very clear what the African shamans, what knowledge and information they have held for a long, long time. And you can see the Eurocentric influence and the desperate uh, attempts to destroy that knowledge and information by the Eurocentric history books that have replaced all the ancient knowledge, not only in southern Africa, but in all the native lands around the world when they were invaded some 500 years ago by the, those thugs from Europe. When they invaded the Americas, Africa, Asia, Australia, they did the same, they, they followed the exactly same plan of action. They invade, they take over the land, they, they kill all the knowledge keepers, they destroy all their written material or any kind of artifacts that they have that that, that contain information from ancient times and that's how they create a species with amnesia where you separate people from their ancestors so you create a gap and a generational gap separate the people from their ancestors replace all their books and knowledge with Eurocentric history books and the Bible and the Quran and suddenly you've got a, a species with amnesia they have no idea who they are, where they come from and why we're here and then we look at the, some of the remaining knowledge keepers that have somehow escaped the, the, the massacre when they come out with all the knowledge and information, we look at them like they've gone crazy because our history books don't have this information in it. What are you talking about? You know, our historians would have written it down. They know all the stuff. So Adam's Calendar is a spectacular place right on the edge of a cliff, as you can see over there. Badly destroyed, but in an attempt to resurrect it, that's what it looks like. We have um, the stone man closest to you. We have a Horus bird that looks out at the three stones of Orion. And in the distance we have two pyramids. There's actually a third one that align with the rise of Orion. So we have Horus, Orion and the pyramids that line up. And guess what? Not only does the same kind of uh, imagery and, and uh, information that we find all over Egypt is encoded in the site, but the site itself is aligned on the 31 degrees east longitudinal line. There's Adam's calendar or Adam's pyramids. Great Zimbabwe, if you extend the line, you get to the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's all aligned beautifully along 31 degrees east. And uh, that tells us that whatever is going on here, it was a very, very important longitudinal positioning for those ancients that put all these structures together. Those guys and their loincloths and their hammers and stone hammers and chisels. These, they were really busy. They were up and down that line. They didn't stop. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so what is all this activity about in Southern Africa? And it's always about one thing. It's always about the gold. 
And that's the, the spectacular thing. You know, we forget, often forget that the Egyptian empire was all about the gold as well. You know, the Egyptians had so much gold, they were putting it on the pyramids, were, everything was made from bloody gold. 